Welcome to episode seven of One Quick Barrel Swap. In this episode, the new snowflakes have arrived, so I'll put them on, show you guys what it's gonna look like. I've got the new fuel pump, so I'll show you how to remove your old fit and new. Uh, our tail shafts here from A1 tail shafts, and we'll continue on with the wiring. Alright, so step number one, we're gonna bang on our new snowflake wheels and tyres. Now the guys at MC Racing, I think they're in Sydney, New South Wales, got a website, jump on. Really easy to deal with. I just told him the size of the rim, he works the offset, tell him to make a model of the car. Easy as that, turn up with tyres on and a pile of nuts. So you guys did vote for the snowflakes, that's what's going on. I'll get the old wheels off, we'll bang the snowflakes on, we'll roll it out and show you guys what it looks like. Alright, so I've got the wheels off and I've unwrapped the other one. So here, we've got the winners of your vote. So thanks for voting, love the feedback. The snowflakes are a massive winner. So Simmons are out, we'll give, we'll give them the boot. The G-Max Sport, which I borrowed up on the guys on the front to try them, I'll give them back, they're not needed. Now, with the snowflake flakes, 19 by eight on the front, 19 by nine and a half on the rear. So we've got a nice little bit of dish back up here, as we can see, so they should look really good. now. If you're gonna get yourself a set of wheels and build a diff, always put your wheels in the car first. We take the measurement, then you can make your diff. Now, I've gone the other way around it because of the R&D, but we also have a shop here that makes our own diff, so it's not a big deal for us. So, what I'll do is before we remove the diff, I wanna try these wheels, check the tail shaft, and then we get down the back to Jason, the boys. They can jig off it and they can make the, the final product. So, on with the wheels, let's roll it out and see what it looks like. Now a couple of things to allow, I haven't got the brake on there, so we've got the thickness of the hat once it slides on the end of the axle. And the other thing is the wheel nuts, which I'll grab. Which the guys supplied with the wheels, which you have got to seal there. Now, we want to run the Overlength stud, which is either Morosso or ARP brand that we always use. So you will need open-ended wheel nuts if you're going to run one of our nine-inch dips. All right, so the wheels are fitted. Now I'm gonna lower the car down and we'll roll it out and get a good look at it. Now, one thing to be mindful of, the new wheels, it's a new diff. The track which we really wanna check, we don't wanna damage our wheels or our quarter panels, or even our front guard when we lower it down. So when you do it, just lower it in increments, double check it before rolling it off the hoist. All right, so the snowflakes are on. I reckon they look really good. So MC Racing, jump on Google. Uh, God's really helpful there. If he doesn't answer, he always calls you back. So he'll set the offset up. I'm happy with the wheels. Now I'm gonna get it back on the hoist. Double check the tail shaft, because it's been made by A1 tail shafts out of Geelong. So double check that, then hopefully we'll get the dip out for Jason and the boys. All right, so I'm just sliding the tail shaft out. I'm trying to. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna cut the tail shaft out. What if his uh, tail shaft's as strong as his box? We'll go right. Oh, perfect. So we're just going to try and fit it. Obviously, why I've still got the nine inch in there, we might as well uh, try it, make sure it's all good before I whip it back out. It's one less, or one more thing I can tick off. Right now, so clearances are really good. It's nice and central. Uh, Jason done a really good job with the diff now. So now I know that's all good. I whip it out, uh, wheels off, and then we'll start making a plan to get this diff out.
Right, it's time to move on to the fuel pump now. I'll grab the old fuel pump out in a minute. Now this is a new one. Give you guys a quick rundown. We jumped on eBay. It's a TI Automotive one, um, which are made by Walbro. Little blue logo in there. I know if the camera will pick that up. But uh, and the part number is EFP287. So if you jump on eBay, you want to get one. Uh, hopefully this will do the job. So just remember, it's a factory turbo barrel. We're not putting a million horsepower in this thing. It's going to stay factory. They recommend this will do the job. So that's what we're going to run with. We're going to listen to the experts. So I'll just drop this out of the box. As you can see, tiny little pump. That's all it should take. That one, we've got a plug. A build up. And that's about it. So we come around, we'll grab the pump out. Get that boot closed, try and keep the stuff out of the tank the best we can. So what I'll do is I'll just whip down, grab a blanket, I'll lay out, we'll dismantle it all and I'll show you guys how to fit it and I'll learn myself how to do it. So, two secs. Righto, so we've got the blanket down. Obviously, to keep everything, the dust out of it, everyone's got dirt and grime on the bench now. Massive trick I do with everything, and every kid's got one, but most of you adults do too, is the phone. Set on camera mode, take half a dozen photos in different angles. So when we pull it apart, and we have to leave, it doesn't go to plan, and we come back a week later to put it back together, we know exactly how it all goes, so. Now step one, that's what I teach all the young kids at work here, because they won't put their camera down, their phone down ever, so anything you're doing, if you haven't done one before, take a heap of photos, it can't go wrong. At the end of the job, you don't use them, delete them, it's not a big deal, but it may save you, so. Easy little pointer there. Right, we'll whip the wires off. I'll undo next, uh, undo all the hose clamps, loosen them all off the best we can. Alright, so so far all we've done is undo the wiring first, undo the main clamp and the two, two hose clamps. It's come apart really easy. I'm not saying it's going to continue that way, but... Now obviously the reason for the filter, as we can see in the bottom here, stuff I tip out my dirty hands, it's not allowing it to go into the pump, so it's done its job. Right now, I've never pulled one of these pumps apart before and that's taken bugger all, plain and simple. So, maybe a little bit harder to go together, but you guys at home, don't be afraid to have a go. Something like this, we've given you the part number, pulled it all apart, you undo everything, all going to plan. It's been soaking your fuel over the years, so it come apart really easy. So it's not gonna be rusty, not corroded, it shouldn't break up. So, it's disassembled, now comes the tricky bit, putting it back together. All right, so as we can see, pump sizes, there's a massive difference. But I reckon we can get around that. So what we'll do is we'll assemble it the best we can and we'll wing it a little bit along the way, but it should be fine. So old one out, new one, pop the filter on. So that's gonna go down in the hole like so. Out the old filter, obviously we don't need two filters. Cap off. Now the wiring's got the plug. The other bit's the eyelet terminals, or push on terminals, don't stress. We'll sort that out at the end, and you're gonna have a lot of play in the pump. We'll come up with an idea there. So, clipping this back on, make sure you get your hose clamp over your hose, which mine had come off.
Right, so clamps are all done back up. Now, we have got a lot of movement inside the ring now. Obviously the pumps, this one's a lot smaller. So what we need to do, being rubber in there, we just need to offset it one side as we can see the pump is. And we need some kind of wedge to jam in there. Now, if you've got a lathe at home, you can make an aluminium sleeve, anything like that. There's a thousand different ways to do it. But for you guys that are down on tools, in a bit of a hurry and an easy way to do it, we get ourselves a bit of 10 mil or 3 8 fuel hose, we'll be able to use it for a wedge and one hose clamp, that's all we need. So I'll go around a piece up and I'll be back and I'll show you how to fit it. Right on now, so I've got myself a little bit of EFI fuel hose, doesn't matter, any kind of fuel hose will be fine. This here is 9.5, so 3 8 10 mil, do the job. A little off cut, now I've pinched that off a second hand engine around the corner, so it's fairly clean. Now, if we wedge it down in the back, as you can see behind the pump there. A slight little wiggle now I've got the fuel hose which I'll spin it around so the fuel hose is still straight so it hasn't got a lot of weight on it that's wedged in there and now you can see it's jammed really tight so it's jammed by rubber both sides there's no weight on the pump itself now to stop that going sliding up and down it's got a large hose clamp we'll undo it wrap it around both hoses Right now, as you can see, I've just gently nipped that up. It's not tight, it hasn't flattened the main hose. It's wedged in enough that it can't go anywhere. And as you can see, as much weight as you want to push on it, it's firm. So, like I said, if you have a lathe, you have other, way, other ways of doing it, that's fine. If you want to do it quick, easy at home, and it will do the job, satisfactory, easy bit, fuel hose, hose clamp, done. So, that's that out of the way now. We need to wire it up. That there, we don't. We want to make sure we get that correct. So what I'm going to do is remove the old wires out of here. Which ones are pushing? Now the black one there. Just do one at a time so I don't mix it up. So the black one there's an earth. So our wires here. We're onto a big plug. To remove the plug, quick and easy. That's that out of the way. And we'll grab ourselves a couple of push-on terminals. Righto, so that's my earth terminal side. So I'm going to strip the wire, slide it in. Now I'm going to solder it. It's in the tank. We don't want a uh, crimp joint to break or let go. Now that's that side. Now when we attack the positive side, which is your yellow wire, goes to the main stud. If you have a look up in here with the camera, it's not a friendly little stud or terminal to get to, even if we come in from the other side there. And I don't really want to break that isolator or put a lot of weight on there. I don't think it'll end well. So an easy way around that was we'll just we'll strip joint and solder. Now, if you solder it, you insulate it, the thing will be fine. Obviously for you guys at home, it would be a lot smarter to use wire strippers, but considering my toolbox here is the community one, the wire strippers have gone walkabout. Alright, so that's our fuel pump conversion done. Now this is obviously out of EFI fuel tank, so just remember XD, XE, XF, there can be variations, they're not all EFI, uh, well they're certainly not all EFI pumps, but if you have got this model out of an EFI car, that's the easiest way to do it. That's the pump number. Now, same ways to come out, drop it in, do it up, a couple of gentle taps around. That collar, we'll clip the hoses on, original wire and back in, fuel system sorted. Alright, so 
fuel pump's all fitted, back the way it was factory there now. So I'll quickly screw this cap on. That's another job we can tick off the list. All right, so we're onto the wiring here. Now you need to make a plan. With the barrel looms, they've got a lot of plugs lock going on. So what I've done here is, our grommet goes through the firewall, so let's get that down here where it needs to be. So we'll sit that there. On top of that is your plugs for your computer. Same area there, so we'll just let it sit there. Then we start separating things. We go away to this side, I've pre-laid this out. You can see here, it's labeled. It's got on there, speed sensor. So we'll sit that over to one side. On the top here, we have our coil wiring. So the coil wiring has got to go underneath the cover at the top. So we flick that across, out of the way. A big chunky loom here, you'll see it's got all the injector plugs in it. That's got to feed through the intake there. So where it all wraps around, we go through the middle there, which I'll show you that shortly. Starter motor, start wire, and a power feed picks up off the starter motor. So once we map it all down in there, we'll lay it all through there, that should drop down pretty close to the starter motor, and then the rest will make sense as you go along. So first do it, spread it out the best you can. Obviously you've got to paint a card, just be a little bit more careful, get someone to give you a hand. Lay it all out, get it in its groups where you think it should go. We'll have a go roughing it in. In worst case, you run the wrong path, pull it back out, we start again. All right guys, uh, this stage we're just to plug and wire it in. Now it's a slow process, but now I've got it laid out. It's not a hard one, it's just slow moving. Obviously, squeeze the hands in through the manifold around the engine, it's gonna take me a little while. So uh, I'm sure you guys have got something more important to do than watch me for the next few hours plug a wiring loom in. So that's gonna be a wrap for this week. Uh, I hope you've got a lot out of it. Like and subscribe below, and we'll see you again soon.